Paul Rubens was a member of an improv comedy group in the 70s, along with Conan O'Brien and the late Phil Hartman. During this time, Rubens created the Pee Wee character, the wild and wacky man-child. Rubens got his own late-night special on HBO based off his stage act. Then he went on various late-night talk shows where his fame really started to catch on like wildfire. I mean, Pee Wee Herman was like a phenomenon in the 80s. He appeared in character in Cheech and Chong's next movie, and even Saturday Night Live. The film, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, was directed by Tim Burton. Famous nowadays, sure, but at the time, he was totally unknown. Tim Burton had left Disney and made a short film called Vincent. Rubens saw it and decided Burton would be the perfect choice to direct his movie. Later on, Rubens appeared in Tim Burton's Batman Returns as the Penguin's father and did voices for The Nightmare Before Christmas. The Pee Wee film led to the Pee Wee's Playhouse TV series, one of the craziest shows ever made. I can't believe I was brought up on this. It was filled with special effects and puppets. There were awesome stop-motion scenes in the refrigerator and claymation dinosaurs. The film also led to another Pee Wee film called Big Top Pee Wee, which wasn't anywhere near as good, and a cameo in the star-studded Back to the Beach where Pee Wee sings Surfing Bird. Back to the film, Pee-wee's Big Adventure. It has everything. It's a whodunit, it's action, horror, comedy, crime, romance, and most of all, an adventure. It's incredibly visual. It's got the classic Tim Burton style written all over it. But combine Tim Burton with the world of Pee-wee and you have something truly unique and bizarre. Just for the locations and sets themselves, this movie is worth watching. Pee-wee's home in the beginning is a freaking madhouse and a child's paradise. There are toys everywhere. He has a giant toothbrush, a fire pole, a Mr. Potato Head, and an Abraham Lincoln breakfast machine. On the outside of the house, there's rockets, sand and his reindeer, an octopus sprinkler, and to top it all off, a secret area where he keeps the greatest bicycle on earth. The basic premise is that Pee Wee loves his bicycle more than anything in the world. It gets stolen, and he has to track it down on a cross-country extravaganza. This is a difficult movie to do justice in a single review because there's things to talk about in every scene. There's the famous dinosaur statues, the magic shop, the biker bar, the rodeo, the Alamo, and the Warner Brothers Studios backlot. If that's not enough, throw in Santa Claus, Godzilla, and fucking Twisted Sister. I mean, sweet mother of God, could this movie be any more entertaining? The characters are classic. Francis, Mickey, Dottie, especially Amazing Larry. What makes Amazing Larry so great is that you don't see him in any other part of the movie, so you're just left wondering, who is this guy? What's his deal? Of course, it has its share of scary characters, too, like the clown surgeons and Large Marge. That scared the shit out of me as a kid. Even today, it's pretty freaky. It's so offbeat. Nothing like that happens anywhere else in the movie. Another scene I really enjoy is when Pee-wee's life story becomes the basis of an action movie and James Brolin plays Pee-wee. But the real Pee-wee is in the movie as a bellhop, looking as awkward as ever, with an uncontrollable habit of looking at the camera. What's funny is that Pee-wee's watching the movie and doesn't seem to be aware of his bad acting. In fact, he's overjoyed by it. What else can be said about this film? It's a unique comedy that gets better with age and has to be seen to be believed.